crazy. I've been trying to get. Space. They, they haven't even seated beyond the red. Yeah. Awesome. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Um, hello, my name is Samuel Jones, and this is the Roxbury Presbyterian Choir. Um, we would like to um, 
extend the invitation for all of you to worship with us. We're going to teach you a couple of very simple songs. We hope that you will worship with us. Thank you. The greatness of the Lord. The greatness of the Lord is inconceivable. The love, the love that He shows is unconditional. The power of the Lord is unbeatable. Great is the God we serve. The greatness, the greatness of the Lord is inconceivable. The love that He shows is unconditional. The power of the Lord is unbeatable. Say great, great is the God we say God is great. God is great. Woo! And greatly to be praised. God is great. And greatly to be praised. Sing it again. The greatness of the Lord, the greatness of the Lord is inconceivable. The love that He shows, the love that He shows is unconditional. The power of the Lord, the power of the Lord is unbeatable. Great is the God we serve. God is great. God is great, and He's greatly and greatly to be praised. Sing, God is great. God is great. Oh, and He's greatly to greatly to be praised. Sing, God is great. God is great. Oh, greatly greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Sing, God is great. God is great. Hey, and He's greatly to to be praised. Sing, God. to be praised sing God is great God is hey. great and he's greatly said he's greatly to be, greatly to be hey sing God is great God, God is, is great. great can we go one more time and he's greatly to is it okay to be praised. sing my God is great God yeah. oh. and he's greatly said he's greatly Hey. To be praised. Say, my God is great. God, God is, is great. great. Oh, 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 oh. And, and greatly, greatly to be praised. Sing, God is great. God, God is, is great. great. Hey, and He's greatly too. And hey, to be everybody sing, God is great. God, God is great. Is great. Oh, 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 hey. And greatly to be praised. Sing, God is great. God is great. Hey, just sing, God is great. God is great. Oh, I sing, God is great. God is hey. great. And He's greatly said He's greatly. And, and greatly to be Amen, amen. This next song is a simple song. I need everyone to come in on the chorus. The chorus says, How great is our God. Amen. The splendor. The splendor of the King. Clothed in majesty. Let all the earth. Let all the earth rejoice. All the earth rejoice. Rejoice, he wraps himself in light. 
hide. And darkness tries to hide. And darkness tries to hide. And trembles at his voice. And trembles at his voice. Sing how great, how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will sing how great. How great is our God. Second verse, age to age. Just on the Age to age he stands. And time? And time is in. Beginning and the end. Beginning and the end. The God? The Godhead three in one. Father, Spirit, Son. Father, Spirit, Son. The Lion and the Lamb. The Lion and the Lamb. Everybody sing how great. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Hallelujah. Sing with me how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great. Is our God. This is a repeat after me. He's the name above all names. Name above all names. And he's worthy of our praise. Worthy Hallelujah. Of our praise. Sing mighty are the works of your hands. Mighty are the works of your hands. Sing mighty are the works of your hands. Mighty oh. are the works of your hands. Said he worthy above all names and he's worthy of our praise sing mighty are the works of your hand sing mighty are the works of your hands sing how great how great is our God sing with me how great he's a real great God and all will sing how great how great is our God just sing it softly to him how great is our God sing with me how great is our God and all will see how great how great is our God. We sing that one more time. Everybody sing how great. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great. How great is our God. Hallelujah. We're going to sing name above all names. He's the name above all names. Name above all names. And he's worthy of our praise. Worthy of our praise. Sing mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your hand. Sing mighty are the works of your hand. Said he's the name above all names. Oh, it is worthy of our praise. Sing mighty are the works of your hand. Sing mighty are the works of your hand. Sing how great, how great is our God. Hallelujah. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will sing. How great, how great, how great, how great, how great, hallelujah, if he's great, sing how great, how great, hallelujah, sing with me.
Prairie Presbyterian Church Combined Choir! Good evening, everybody! Good evening. Boy, you look fabulous! This is really the way to start a great party, and we're having a great party tonight. My name is Liz Walker, and I'm officially opening this event tonight. Yeah, you can applaud, please! <laughs> Woo! As we celebrate the 15th anniversary of the Greater Boston Interfaith Organization and pay special tribute to my personal shero in the world, Sherry Andes. And to open up this evening, I would like to call on Rabbi Ron Friedman from Temple Israel, who will officially welcome us. Thank you, Liz. It's my privilege to welcome you with the traditional Hebrew welcome, Beruchim Habaim. May you who enter this space be blessed. I want to extend that welcome in particular to Governor Patrick and to the civic leaders who are here among us, and most especially to the family of GBIO's esteemed lead organizer, Sherry Andes, whose presence brings us all to this moment. John Donne, in his poem, A Valediction Forbidding Mourning, speaks of the powerful relationship between husband and wife. He likens their souls to the two points of a compass, on the one hand, distinct from one another, on the other, always attached, so that if one moves, the other moves in synchrony. This image also pertains to a great leader and the community that she has nurtured. Sherry, never imagine that you are detached from that which you brought to maturity and fruition. You will, will remain for all of us the fixed foot of the compass, your teaching permits GBIO to circumnavigate the world of justice, and so we, all of us here tonight, are forever attached to you. <clears throat> Most of you know that it is GBIO's tradition to invite one among us to offer prayer praying from the depths and strength of his or her tradition. So it's my further delight to invite Suzanne L. Reyes to come forward to share the opening prayer from Islamic tradition. Good evening, everyone. It's an honor, it's an honor to be here as a leader from the Islamic Society of Boston Cultural Center to pray for my own tradition in this beautiful synagogue, Temple Israel. Now let us pray. In the name of God, the most beneficent, the most merciful. God, as you have united us over the past 15 years, as you have gathered us here tonight, we thank you. We seek your guidance and your support. Allow us to endeavor in the years ahead to bring forth your message of unity, justice, and faith. Continue to join us together, people of all faith traditions, to work for common good and common cause, to give a voice to the voiceless and power to the powerless. Increase our individual and collective power. Make us among your most humble servants. God bless all your children. Bless this great city of Boston. Bless our Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Bless the leadership of all your institutions present here tonight. And bless GBIO for another 15 to the power of 15 more years. Amen. Fifteen years have gone by quickly. There have been important relationships built important lessons learned, 
and a number of extraordinary victories that have improved the lives of people throughout the Commonwealth and around the country. Tonight, we're going to look back at how and where GBIO began. We're going to look ahead to the future. We're going to explore the dynamics of the unique power that is GBIO. You know, there is a divine synergy that runs throughout relationships here in GBIO. The secret is there's only one God. <laughs> and no matter how we look at God, there is only one God. When individuals join this organization, we each become stronger than we could ever imagine. Together, we are bigger than the sum of our individual parts. That is the power that changes the world, and that is what GBIO does. Changing the world, of course, takes courage, it takes commitment, and someone has to be the catalyst for all of that, and that is why we are paying tribute to Sherry Andes tonight. Sherry is the backbone, she's the grounding, she's the visionary, she's the big picture, she's the detail person, and if necessary, she will kick a little rear end. <laughs> If there is one person who symbolizes all that GBIO is, it is Sherry Andes, and tonight we celebrate Sherry. And so this is our big night, GBIO. To help us get started, please welcome Father Gerald Osterman, who was here at the very beginning. Good evening, GBIO and friends. Before GBIO, there wasn't a politician in the city who could answer a question with a simple yes or no. <laughs> and to be fair, no preacher who could speak for less than five minutes. In November 1998, Southie was still an Irish village. The North End, Little Italy. Racial hostility was alive and power was concentrated in the hands of a very few. The city was known as a place where people protected their turf, where there was little trust and insularity was the norm. We weren't talking to each other. My Roxbury neighborhood had many problems, and I was frustrated by how little I could do to help them. The Globe caught the spirit that brought me and 44 other clergy together, Christian, Muslim, and Jew, to see if we could do things differently. In editorials, they said they knew of no politician who could bring anywhere near a thousand people together, or for that matter, any number of people crossing all the lines that divide us. They saw something new happening, a new kind of power building with the potential to do things differently. By the time we had our founding assembly in November 1998, we had spent three years doing relationals meetings with each other. I was struck by the magic in my parish as people who had only smiled at each other began to share their stories and get to know each other more deeply. There was a new energy and indeed some new leaders emerged. But the way the globe saw it, we needed to stop having love-ins and get to work. We knew we were what we were seeing, though. Trust was building. People of vastly different faiths, cultures, races, and economic circumstances were working together, even having fun. We were discovering that nearly everyone shared similar concerns and dreams. The way I saw it, we were putting flesh and blood on our Catholic social justice doctrine. We were respecting the dignity of each person. When 3,000 people participated in house meetings to choose our issues, affordable housing and the quality of public education 
were practically unanimous priorities. As we began to strategize and act on these issues, we understood increasingly that by coming together in solidarity, we were building the power to get things done. But it was a new kind of power, not power over, but power with. In November 1998, the Globe said, where the GBIO can muster the discipline, the financing, the creativity, and the goodwill it will need to prosper remains to be seen. It won't be easy going. The group has an ambitious agenda in a city that has not always been kind to such efforts. So, GBIO, 15 years later, how are we doing? GBIO is part of a network of organizations called Metro IAF. We have with us tonight from that organization, Rob English. Good evening, GBIO. On behalf of Metro IAF's 21 affiliated organizations with GBIO, we celebrate your 15 years of creating real change, and we're here to honor Sherry Andes. Uh, Metro IAF's 21 affiliates have a deeper than grassroots presence in the political and financial power centers east of the Mississippi River in the United States, the United Kingdom, Germany and Europe, and in Australia. We work together with people to imagine the change that they'd like to create, connect individuals and institutions to multiply their power, and organize people by the tens of thousands to make their voices heard. GBIO, you're part of something broader. Your sister organizations in Baltimore just this year secured a billion dollars in city and state financing to build and renovate 35 new schools. In New York, your organizations are leading the fight to uh, upgrade 180,000 units of public housing in that city. And in Northern Virginia just this year, we secured $30 million to help rehab homes in Prince William County at the ground zero of foreclosure in this country. And here in Boston, you've continued the work to improve the most extensive expansion of medical health care in the country. For years, GBIO, you've led the effort with your allies to provide a half a million people in Massachusetts access to health care who would have never had the chance of life-saving and preventive care without your work. But I'm here to tell you that you didn't stop there, GBIO. You went to Illinois and our sister affiliates in Los Angeles and Texas and Ohio. And because of you, GBIO, you're helping hundreds of thousands of people gain access to health care. GBIO, you have modeled exemplary leadership and what it means for citizen leaders like yourself to create change throughout this country. In fact, your strategy team is a model team that many of us in IAF have learned and taught from. So on behalf of Metro IAF, I congratulate each and every one of you on the work that you have done. And for the past 14 years, Sherry Andes has worked with you shoulder to shoulder in creating these changes. Now, Sherry and I have known each other for a long time, 20 years, in fact. We met at national training. IEF brings people together across all kinds of lines. The one thing you might not know about Sherry Andes that brought us together is we were the only two people in the room that jumped out of a perfectly good airplane. Since that day, Sherry and I stuck together shoulder to shoulder, and we've worked together ever since. We know Sherry as a fighter, a br brilliant political thinker. She reads the political and local context and quickly grasps 
people's interest and organization's interest to create strategy. But Sherry's much, much more than a political thinker. Her success of or as an organizer goes way beyond politics. At her core, she has an innate curiosity about people, a deep belief in them, and a drive that's deeply embedded in her spirit to create change. What sets her apart is that she stands for the whole. I know whatever fight that IAF is in, if I look to my left or to my right, there is Sherry Andes. In two words, rock solid. And we'll be forever grateful for who she is and for what she has done together. On behalf of Metro IAF, we congratulate GBIO and Sherry, we have been together and we will stay together. And Metro IAF looks forward to the future changes that you create for the next 15 years with Larry Gordon as your lead organizer. Thank you. Thank you. GBIO, of course, could not be successful without many partners and allies. And we are extremely proud of our relationship with one of us, our most powerful allies, the Governor of the Commonwealth. Please welcome Deval Patrick. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Liz, for the warm introduction to all the reverend clergy and big shots here. <laughs> Happy birthday, GBIO. Happy 15th birthday. I wanted to come by, and I, I really was just going to come by and say happy 15th birthday because it was so thrilling to me to come and be in the presence of GBIO without having to sit in the chair <laughs> and answer complex and intimidating questions with a yes or no answer. More often than not posed by Sherry Andes with that poker face. So I was just happy to come by to say happy birthday and be on my way. But Dan and Burns said I should take a little bit more time. Um, I am worried about that with all the preachers here because there is a real chance we may not get out before dawn. <laughs> I um, Also, I wanted to see whether Reverend Hamilton, fresh from Los Angeles, would appear in his white suit. I love GBIO because it's the best example of what Dr. King described as the beloved community that I have ever experienced. The idea that values-based leadership can be a part of your everyday lives, your everyday organizing, and your power is an extremely important message. And it's an extremely powerful experience for me. And I think it has been for you and for the many, many lives you've touched. So I'm happy and honored to wish you a happy 15th birthday. I thought you were older. <laughs> In fact, when I met you eight years ago, I thought you were old. <laughs> old and crotchety going back again to what it felt like to answer those questions <laughs> with those yes or no answers. I've told some of you before uh, about a favorite, um, I've talked to you uh, uh, in the past, referred in the past, about a favorite um, story in my faith tradition. It's in the last chapter of the last gospel, and there's a colloquy between Christ and Peter, where um, uh, Christ asked Peter three times, do you love me? Am I remembering right? right. And uh, <laughs> better not mess up in here, right? 
And the first, the first time um, Peter's response, and I am paraphrasing, okay? <laughs> and the, f- the first time uh, Peter replies, of course, you know I love you. Come on. And, uh, and Christ says, uh, asks again, do you love me? And Peter says, come on, everything we've been through, everything I've sacrificed for you, you know I love you. And Christ asks a third time, do you love me? And uh, Peter says, how many times do I have to say it? Over and over again, I've told you. And the reply from Christ is, if you love me, feed my sheep. That idea of feeding his sheep, that that's our job in our time right now, that we are each other's sheep, sheep in flocks we know, sheep in flocks that are familiar to us, sheep that belong, we think, to other shepherds, but are in fact united by a common sense of value and humanity, that we are our brother and our sister's keeper, and that we have a stake in our neighbor's dreams and struggles as well as our own. I want to... And Sherry has been this lead organizer, this pain in my... hmm, (laughs) in the best possible way. That incredible combination of being very effective and very kind is extraordinary. And so I had to be here. I wanted to be here. It's breaking my heart that she's leaving, except I know there is excellent leadership that she has prepared to take that baton and carry it forward. And I also know, as I hope you do, that she leaves the responsibility with you and me, right? That's what GBIO is about that we as individuals take responsibility for cultivating and carrying on this beloved community. And Sherry, we thank you for so much you have done to make it so. God bless you. Thank you for having me tonight. Good evening, GBIO. First of all, let me announce that uh, out of all of the speeches that I've given for GBIO, tonight I will make history. This will be the first speech that I will come in under time assigned. (laughs) Prayerfully. (laughs) But let me begin by introducing my predecessors who laid the foundation for my uh, work as president and Pastor Burns Stansfield work as president. And so I would ask you hold your applause until they all stand. Bishop Frank Kelly, Reverend David Carl Olson, Olson, Reverend Jennifer Mills Knudsen. Would you please celebrate them and remain standing? <laughs> and as they remain standing, uh, President uh, Burns, we together salute you and we celebrate you in this new way. All right, my assignment is to talk about the power of GBIO. And uh, I started rifling through some of the stories since that's the stuff that we do business with. And I thought I would tell you the story about how uh, 15 years ago, 50 clergy from primarily Catholic and Protestant backgrounds across neighborhoods with some of our Jewish brothers and sisters with us transformed into a thousand conversations that ultimately brought 5,000 of the most diverse gathering at Boston High School and gave birth to this incredible organization. But I don't have time to tell you that story. (laughs) Somebody shout power. Power. I thought I would tell you the story about how 
when Haitian nursing home workers were being horrendously misused all over the state, we strong-armed the then Attorney General Riley, brought him out to about 500 leaders diverse gathered in Dorchester in a Christian church that was once that was housed in what once was a Jewish synagogue. And he came prepared to tell us no. But as he looked at the diversity, it seemed as though the divine slipped from heaven and tapped him on the shoulder. And he remembered his immigrant roots and twisted a no into a yes and brought the leverage of his office to bring justice to Haitian nursing home workers all over the state of Massachusetts. I was going to tell you that story. But I don't have time to tell you that story. Somebody shout power. I was going to tell you the story of how it felt being in the rotunda at, uh, at the state house when the health care bill was passed. How GBIO led a coalition that gathered 100,000 signatures that put teeth in a ballot initiative, a health care ballot initiative that put leverage in the hands of the then Speaker of the House that put enormous pressure on the then Senate President and ultimately gave way to a health care reform bill. You know, long before Romney and long before Obamacare, GBIO cared. And because GBIO cared, there's a Romney care and an Obamacare. And soon in the distant future, 50 million folk who don't have health care, they will be cared for too because of the power of GBIO. I wanted to tell you that story, but I don't have time. <laughs> Somebody shout power. power. Here's the story I want to tell you. <laughs> A few weeks ago, I started preparing these remarks. And I started thinking about people. People. People I know here. I started thinking about Governor Laval Patrick and Mayor Thomas Menino and Secretary Judy Ann Bigby as they transition into their own futures. I, I started thinking about people. I started thinking about Rabbi Jonah Pesna and Eric Gervis and Ron Friedman. I started thinking about people. Pastor Vadrine and Pastor Ray Hammond and I started thinking about people, Fran Early and Fran Godine, and people, Nancy Kaufman, people, Matt Fishman, people, Yusuf Ivali and the Roxbury Presbyterian Church family, people, Sam Lord, people, Louise Packard, people that I know. Reverend Liz Walker. And I noticed that there was a lump that started to develop in my throat. And there was tears that started to gather in my eyes. And then it struck me. That's the story of GBIO power that I wanted to tell. You see, that lump in my throat and those tears in my eyes they were the evidence that somehow we managed over 15 years to transcend the politics of left and right. Somehow we managed over 15 years to transcend the ancient divides of race and class and religion. Somehow we managed over 15 years to transcend the tough issues of sexuality and gay marriage and orientation politics. Somehow over the 15 years we, we managed to transcend corporate interests and politics political interest, not that we solved all these things and not that we agree on all these things, but in the midst of all of this and maybe because of all of this, I, I realize that I have just fallen in love with you guys, all of you guys, and that is the power of GBIO that I want to talk about. That is the story. That that is the source of the lump in my throat and the tears in my eyes. 
That's the legacy, Sherry. That's your legacy. That's the legacy that you somehow built an organization by bringing a tattered group of folk out of a balkanized Boston and helped to bring forth the early stage of the beloved community. That's the story of GBIO's power. And so as I go to my seat with time still left on the clock, <laughs> I, I hear... John the Revelator in the final chapters declare, and I saw a new Jerusalem coming down from heaven as a bride adorned from, for its groom. And I heard the Creator declare, behold, I do a new thing. Cherry Andes, you started writing those new things, that new things, over the course of the last 15 years. And I heard somebody else says that it is faith and it is hope. But love is the greatest of it all. And so, Larry, as you prepare to come and as I and Sherry prepare to leave and Burns, as you prepare to stand up and as me and your predecessor prepare to stand down, remember this. Get the politics right. You've got to do that. Get the policy right. You've got to do that. But by all means, get the relationship right so that years from now, you're gathered in another place like this with a broader community and there will be a collective lumps in our throats and tears in our eyes because love is the greatest of it all. God bless you. Jerry, you're a great teacher. You should have taught me never follow Reverend Herman Hamilton <laughs> and Governor Deval Patrick. Thank you, Reverend Hamilton, for your insightful words, for your coming back all the way across the country to be with us tonight, and for your continuous contributions to this organization. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you as well, Governor Patrick. You have chosen to be with us for the moments that have been important to us and we appreciate that. I, I have the honor tonight of introducing Sherry Andes. I've had the privilege of working at her side and under her leadership for the past seven plus years. Tonight I want to take this opportunity to describe what that has meant to me and what that has meant to this organization and what I have seen her do for this organization, for everyone in this room and beyond. Tonight I'd like to focus on two of Sherry's attributes that have already been referred to. Her commitment to relationships to people and her keen understanding of politics. First, relationships. Sherry is a deeply faithful human being. She believes that the human person, each and every one of us, is indeed made in the image and likeness of the divine. And she has a gift of recognizing that dignity in each of us. A quick story. A now very experienced leader in GBIL told me the story of her first meeting with Sherry. Sherry came to her home, sat down in her living room, and over the course of conversation made a pitch for why Sherry thought this person should get more active in GBIO. The woman explained that there were things going on in her life right then that made that impossible. Sherry said she completely understood and she politely left. Six months later, Sherry recontacted her and asked how it was going. That leader several weeks ago described that to me and I quote, in pulling back Sherry showed me that she put my interests ahead of hers, and I was deeply moved. When a talented organizer, a young organizer, under Sherry's tutelage, decided to leave the GBIO staff to continue his own journey to deepen his commitment to his own faith community, Sherry reimagined their relationship and met him one senior staff to another. She finds a way to move from strength to strength. And
And once that relationship with Sherry is formed, the bond for Sherry is thick and tight. In terms of my own relationship with Sherry, if something mattered to me, it mattered to Sherry. And she has always had my back. Now to her keen sense of politics, her capacity to wed this deep commitment in people and relationships with her own political savvy. Let's count the ways. First, she knows how to seize the moment. In the early 2000s, John McDonough and Healthcare for All approached Sherry with a proposition for a partnership between Healthcare for All and GBIO. Now, Sherry knew that since the early 90s, health care had been the third rail in politics, but she saw and it as well that in the early 2000s, nothing new was going to come at that time from Washington, but she also saw that here in Massachusetts, there was new top leadership in both houses of the legislature. She seized that moment. She made the deal with John McDonough and health care for all, and the rest is history. Second, she understands the connection between vision and deliverables. She knows Isaiah when he says, people without a vision will perish. But she also knows Moses who demands in the moment and on the ground, let my people go. Let these particular people go and do it now. And so she put Moses and Isaiah together. When in our healthcare work, she articulated a vision of shared responsibility to get the large hospitals, to get the large insurance companies, to get the state, and to get the GBO together under a term that she coined of shared responsibility, but she never took her eye off the prize that Laverne at Roxbury Presbyterian and Peter from Fourth Pres and countless others got the health care they deserved. Finally, lest anyone worry that Sherry would let the success in one arena uh, uh, get in the way of our broad appeal, she also leveraged the collective deposits of GBIO and Citizens Bank to create a financial literacy program moving from debts to assets, which is now invested, where Citizens Bank has now invested a million of its own dollars. Finally, back to health care for a moment. Although I would like to think of myself as someone leaning away from exaggeration and hyperbole, I believe the following to be true. One, there would be no United States Affordable Care Act without the Massachusetts reform. Two, there would be no Massachusetts reform without GBIO. And three, there would be no GBIO in healthcare were it not for Sherry Andes. <laughs> Sherry, I admire you as a colleague. I am indebted to you as my teacher, and I treasure you as my friend. And I present to you Sherry Andes. Good evening, everybody. Thank you, Larry. Thank you. It's all about gratitude tonight. My strength comes from my family first. I'd like to introduce them to you now. Father John Doyle, would you please stand? Turn around so everybody can see you. <laughs> Father Doyle is the priest who has lived with my family for the past 11 years and who my youngest fondly refers to as Tio. Now I'd like to introduce my husband's family, whom I love so much and who plays such a big part in my life. And I'd ask them all to stand and for you to hold your applause until they're all standing. My sister-in-law, Mary, come down from Vermont to be here tonight. Stand and turn around. My brother-in-law, Matthew Andes, and my dear friend and sister-in-law, Teresa Andes. 
my exceptional niece and nephew, Matthew and Molly Andes, and finally, my wonderful mother-in-law, Jean Andes. Next, it's my privilege to introduce my own sister and mother, come all the way from Tennessee and Sarasota to be here tonight. They are so very special to me, and I am grateful for them for making the journey. My lovely sister, Denise Kirkwood, and my mother, my precious mother, Frances Barnes. Wave, Mom, so they can see you. And finally, my own beloved family, my stellar sons, George Morton, Lee Thomas, and Timothy John. Stand up, guys. And the man with whom I have shared 28 years of my life, and without whose support, I could never have been the lead organizer of GBIO. He deserves as much recognition tonight as I will receive. Martin Andes. There are, of course, others I would like to recognize and thank tonight who have encouraged me, challenged me, been there for me. Feel my gratitude now. I offer these remarks tonight in memory of my late grandmother, Catherine Louise Brislin. The work I have done at GBIO and that I will continue to do in my next venture is an expression of my love for her. I carry with me so many stories and memories from my time here at GBIO. There are four that I'd like to share with you tonight. The first, Reverend Hamil Hamilton alluded to. It's about the time that GBIO came together during the debate for same-sex marriage in Massachusetts in 2004. This debate was an extremely important, challenging, and pregnant moment for both the state and for GBIO with GBIO leaders deeply divided on this profound issue, the very existence of the organization was threatened. And then, GBIO leaders, many of them on this stage, came together from both sides to affirm each other's importance, the importance of staying in relationship and the vital role of GBIO in their collective lives. With this affirmation made in spite of abiding disagreement, enormous tension, and mutual disappointment, GBIO's future was secured as both sides proclaimed that we are stronger together. The second moment was the time that Governor Patrick came to the mosque, the ISBCC. An act of political courage, the governor came in spite of the fact that from its very inception, the ISBCC had been embroiled in a controversy over its very right to exist. The purpose of the event 
was to affirm the Muslim community's identity and its political relevance. However, the treasurer of the state, then also running for governor of the Commonwealth, saw it another way when he said publicly, quote, Governor Patrick should stop playing politics with terrorism and focus on protecting all the citizens of the Commonwealth, end quote. GBIO's response was swift and decisive. All members of the interfaith community, Christian, Muslim, and Jew, rallied around Governor Patrick, the ISBCC, and the Muslim community, rebuked the treasurer, and reaffirmed publicly that, yes, we are stronger together. The third moment is, of course, that iconic moment of our 2006 health care campaign when so many of us gathered at Faneuil Hall for the signing of Chapter 58, an act to reform health care in Massachusetts. Assembled on the stage were the Democratic Speaker of the House and the Senate President and the late Senator Kennedy along with the head of the Heritage Foundation, who knew, <laughs> and Republican Governor Mitt Romney. For a moment, just a moment, nonpartisanship broke out before all the bickering, backsliding, and acrimony that has come to mark the national health care debate. Massachusetts modeled for the nation what it so desperately needs to learn now. We are stronger together. And finally is a moment I shared with a Cape Verdean couple, Maria and Jose, who lived in the Bowdoin Geneva neighborhood of Boston. It was during a house meeting campaign being run by St. Peter's Parish, and I had the privilege to meet with this couple in their living room and hear their story. They told me that when their elementary and middle school age children came home from school to an empty house, both parents worked. Their instructions were to lock themselves in the basement until Jose got home from his 11 to 7 shift. Why the basement, I asked because it has no windows and the children are safe there. Now Maria and Jose didn't know stronger together from nothing. They were powerless alone is what they were. With no after school program in their neighborhood, they were forced to imprison their own children to keep them safe. Talk about isolation. Fortunately, that house meeting campaign connected Maria and Jose with many other families in the neighborhood with a similar issue. And together, those families were not isolated alone. They were powerful together. They began to lead, together with leadership from Sister Sally McLaughlin, Sister Glenna Connors, Father John Doyle. They created an after-school program, which in turn gave birth to the much-recognized St. Peter's Teen Center. GBIO and colleagues from across Greater Boston, you have been my teachers. These memories, these stories, I will carry forward, close to my heart, because they have helped me to feel in my bones what can't be taught in a classroom. The power of real relationship, not a Pollyanna, kumbaya kind of relationship but the kind forged through facing and working through real tension and conflict, the kind wrought through the tug and pull of calling each other out, negotiating hard, and then shaking hands. You have helped me learn the importance of embracing the other in spite of differences, the reality that we need not feel alone, 
be alone, act alone. We need be, we can be, we must be stronger together. But folks, there are many, many Maria and Jose still out there, unconnected, imprisoned in their own isolation, who need to hear this message. Each of us needs it reinforced still. And you can find others in Roxbury and in South Boston and in Newton and in Lexington who need to hear it as well. They are waiting to meet others who need after-school programming like they do, others who want to organize for better schools. They long to have the power to take on issues like health care or immigration or gun control. They would flourish as leaders in their own congregations if someone but called them to lead. They are you and they are your people, GBIO. Go and get them. You must reach these people, GBIO. There is no resting on laurels. I know this is a celebration, but there is tomorrow. There is only tomorrow, and the day after that, and getting stronger together. And by the way, in case you didn't know, nobody pays for that work but you. We are grateful for our foundation sponsors, some of whom are with us tonight. They've t They've paid for our health care work, our education work, our tax reform work, and we couldn't do that heavy lifting without them. But GBIO, you must fund the organizing. It's your dues, your individual donations, and that's why tonight is so important, because we're laying a foundation for the future. No one pays to do, train to do relational meetings and house meetings and to hold retreats. That funding is on you. Now, my time with you as your lead organizer has come to an end. I have been honored and privileged these past 14 years to have known and worked with so many of you to work with you to do great things. I've become stronger with you and because of you. And I will take that strength with me. I thank you and I honor you. Thank you. And now, it's my time to pass this privilege on to another, my colleague Larry Gordon. Larry is a 23-year veteran of organizing with the Industrial Areas Foundation. In 1989, he was the lead organizer for Voice, an IAF affiliate in Los Angeles. He then laid the foundations for an organization in Sacramento. For over a decade, he was the lead organizer for the IEF affiliate organization in the San Francisco Bay Area, the Bay Area Organizing, and he also built an organization in Marin County, California. Since 2006, he has been a senior organizer on staff at GBIO. And in that capacity, I have worked extremely closely with Larry and extremely well. While at GBIO, he built our second organization in New England called Connect in Connecticut. He is 
a superb organizer, a good friend, and he will continue to lead GBIO to be stronger together. Please acknowledge Larry Gordon. Sherry, Larry, we need you to stay standing for a moment. Everybody else can be seated. My name is Reverend Dan Smith. I am the senior minister at the First Church in Cambridge, and I'm a vice president of GBIO. As the governor has observed, along with others, we in GBIO like to ask our yes or no questions. We do this in front of large assemblies where the pressure is on, right? We call these actions. Well, Sherry, since you have trained us so well in these effective tactics, we would like to run a little action on you. And I've invited some of our colleagues from the strategy team oh, no. to join me. The hot seat is over here. And I've also... to join us in this. This is his chance to be on the other side of the action. Oh, yes. Now, we don't have any commitment cards to record her answers, but we do have some very important questions for you, Sherry, and we're looking for yes or no answers. Do we understand the ground rules? Good. Please hold your applause. Please hold your applause until we've heard all of Sherry's answers, and then, GBIO, we will have some questions for you. Sherry Andes, will you do everything in your power to receive fully this organization's profound thanks and appreciation for your 14 years of dedicated and faithful service and leadership? If so, Please say yes or no. Yes. <laughs> and Sherry, <laughs> will you receive the untold thanks from countless citizens in this commonwealth whose lives and livelihoods have benefited from your leadership? Yes or no? Yes. And Sherry, will you take all of the admiration and appreciation and all the other A's we could possibly throw at you, take them wherever you choose to go, yes or no? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Sherry, will you accept our blessings and our best wishes for your leadership wherever you should serve next. Yes or no? Can I say I will? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. By my count, that was at least four yeses. Can I get an amen? amen. All right, and now GBIO, it is your time. Turn, I invite you to stand, please, as you are able. And when I give you the sign, I invite you to join me in responding as loudly and as proudly and as robustly as you would like. You can say, we do. You could say, wahoo. You can say whatever it is that you want. Dear members and friends of the Greater Boston Interfaith Organization, do you offer your profound gratitude to Sherry Andes for leading this organization from strength to strength and for making GBIO, our city and our commonwealth, stronger together. And do you offer, Sherry, your support and loving encouragement and highest hopes for whatever her next steps may be? If so, please say, we do! Woo! <laughs> Thank you.
Dan, I don't think this feels right because we, we have to invite her back for an accountability session where we embarrass the <laughs> crap out of her. <laughs> uh, Sherry, as a token of our appreciation, we offer you this gift. It's uh, original calligraphy art from Alyssa Barr. And it's from the book of Matthews, and it reads, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. To Sherry Andes, with love and gratitude for her transformative leadership, GBIO 1999 to 2003. We need Larry and Sherry up here for this. So, Sherry, you're welcome to sit back down or you can just remain standing. Blessed are you, Sherry, and blessed are you, Larry. I invite us all now to share a brief word of prayer for Sherry and for our incoming lead organizer, Larry Gordon. In my tradition, we lay hands on at moments like these, or, and I invite you all, if you feel so comfortable, to extend some arms and hands in blessing, just like that. And I invite some others to come up here and join us and, and have some hands laid on Larry and Sherry. Will you pray with me, please? God, who we know by many names, our hearts are filled with gratitude this evening for models of faith, courage, and leadership for those who have helped us in the words of Dr. King to make a way out of no way. We thank you, God, for those who have guided us in effecting huge changes in this commonwealth, who have taught us how to be public through the strength and power of our traditions, our stories, and our relationships. We give you our deepest thanks, God, for Sherry. We celebrate her extraordinary gifts and the extraordinary effort and time she has shared with this us. We ask, God, that by your grace you release Sherry from any and all GBIO-related burdens and free her to make her next steps with confidence and courage, assured of our love and our endless gratitude. And, God, we give you our deepest thanks for Larry, for his gifts, for his time. We ask, God, that you strengthen these already strong shoulders of Larry Gordon and that you continue to equip him and us to make GBIO our city, our state, our nation, ever stronger together. By your power, God, move us all from strength to strength to strength. And all God's people said, Amen. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the current president of GBIO and the pastor of Fourth Presbyterian Church in South Boston, Reverend Burns Stanfield. I know we're getting close to dessert. <laughs> we're getting ready for that, but more important, we're getting ready to move forward. Amen? Amen. Um, I really need to say a couple of quick thank yous. First of all, there's a whole team of good, good folk that have made this night possible. They told me just to refer you to the program book, but I've got to at least briefly mention these names. Katie, Barbara, Rosemary, Fran, Cindy, Ben, Larry, Sherry, Sue, Virgil Lee. Thank you. Secondly, while Sherry has duly recognized her family, it is really incumbent upon us as an organization to also thank Sherry's family for supporting her and making it possible for her to lead us. Thank you. And one more thank you. Um, I believe Larry's wife, Nancy, uh, is around here somewhere. 
Um, and Nancy, we want to thank you for already making Larry's presence possible, never mind what's in store for us in the future. So thank you in advance, and thank you for what's happened. Thank you, Nancy. Now, we've just been a part of, um, a part of a blessing of Sherry and of Larry. And what I've realized, even as this evening has progressed, is that what, what we need to do as we move on to dessert um, is, claim, is claim our own blessing. We are blessed. Go ahead and say that. We are blessed. We are blessed. Fifteen years ago, um, with three little kids in tow, um, I went to these early GBIO meetings, and I was blessed. And to be sure, I was intrigued by some of the, the involvement in civic life and politics, but you know what really got me? What, what, what got the tears and the lump of, in the throat on the way? It was, it, it was meeting folks, literally my neighbors in Dorchester where I lived. And then having people in my church get to know each other better and meeting people in Quincy and Newton and on and on. It was, it, it was, it was the relationships. I was blessed. And I want to bring that up now. That was the result of what we might call really, really good homework. Going home, sitting with people, sitting with groups of people. And I'm thinking of that now, 15 years later, because we in this city and in this commonwealth are in an incredibly important transitional time right now. In two months, in two months, we will inaugurate a new mayor. And a year after that, we'll welcome a new governor with great fondness in our heart for his or her predecessor. Okay. Thinking about it a different way. <clears throat> There are a couple of new, very important leaders in our community who are going to be moving in to some new home office space. Now, over there on the fifth floor of City Hall, pretty soon, Mr. Walsh is going to be going into this office, checking out the big view that you got up there, making sure there aren't any old dusty 20-year-old mementos cluttering up things. <laughs> He'll learn where the secret bathrooms are, um, he'll make himself at home. Okay? And sometime after that, somebody else will be making their way into that other beautiful corner office in the State House. And he or she will also want to make sure it looks nice. They'll want to make sure the curtains are nice. <laughs> but not too nice. Not too nice. Amen? All right? Not too. They will be making their way into this new home space, those two leaders. And in the next several months, while that's on the way, some other important civic leaders, you and me, we're going back to our houses, our houses of worship. We're calling this our internal campaign. So we're going into our synagogues and our mosques and our churches and our neighborhoods and our parishes. And this is what we're going to do there. We're going to be meeting one-on-one -on -one with people. Dozens, hundreds, maybe even another thousand one-on-ones listening to people's stories. And then we'll get together in small groups and we'll share those stories and we'll listen to each other and we'll imagine, so what should our community be doing to get better? That's what we're going to be doing. I'm going to call it our homework. Really, really good <clears throat> homework. And when we do that homework, I also hope that we reacquaint ourselves with the values at the core of each of our respective traditions. And I'm hoping for even more than that. I'm hoping when we do our homework in prayer, we're even reacquainting ourselves a little bit more with the God who is in the middle of all of that. Yes. Boy, it does my Presbyterian heart good to hear that voice again. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Herman, I know we got to send you back to California, but from now on when I talk, I want a little PA here with Herman's voice. And it says, you go, you South Boston Presbyterian, you go. All right. So we're going to do that work. And I, my prayer, my great faith is that we're going to come out of that homework with a couple of things. One is, we're going to come up with a new vision. 
Now, to be sure, we got to keep working on health care. And to be sure, we're going to keep working on meaningful gun violence prevention. Too many lives are at stake. We're going to continue that. But I think there are new ways that we can be engaging the community. And I think we're going to discern that in those meetings when we do that homework and that important housework in the next several, several months. I, one prayer is that we come out with that, with that vision. But here's the second prayer. That we all come out of that knowing again, as I felt so deeply 15 years ago, that we are blessed. Say it again. We are blessed. We are blessed because we've had this incredible leader in Sherry leading us and working with us for 14 years. We are blessed. Say that. We are blessed because we've already got Larry right at the helm, ready to go. Say it again. We are blessed. We are blessed because we have each other, these relationships and more to come. And say it again. We are blessed. Because in the middle, there is a good God who stands with us when we stand up to bear witness. A God who is with us, helping us stand up to embrace our blessing. Friends, what a fellowship. What a joy divine leaning on the everlasting arms. We are moving forward and God is with us. Amen. Amen. So how are you feeling now, GBIO? I know I'm feeling inspired to be part of this evening of celebration and tribute to my good friend, Sherry Andes. I am feeling so very grateful for her years of leadership. And I'm grateful to each one of us, the leaders, the allies, the families and friends who have come together tonight to celebrate 15 years and will lead us into a powerful future together. Now tonight is a significant milestone for GBIO. It's our first major fundraiser. And being GBIO, we set a target for ourselves, a goal for how much money we want to raise to support the work of that future. Our goal was $150,000. And through your remarkable generosity, GBIO, we have reached that goal tonight. Thank you. Now, before I tell you why that's still not enough, let me hasten to say how truly amazing it feels that we have come together to celebrate the work we've done and the work we will continue to do for organizing for health care accountability, for quality public schools, gun control, and immigration reform. You already know that GBIO is organized people and organized money. Now, some of our revenue comes from dues from our member organizations, the synagogues, churches, mosques, and other advocacy organizations. We also have committed organizational partners and allies who help fund our operations through grants. Sherry referenced some of them, and I want to add my thank you to all of you tonight. But tonight, we also recognize that it is our responsibility as a maturing organization to develop diverse revenue streams, and that each and every one of us, as Sherry pointed out, and I will reiterate, we each have a role to play in supporting the work that we care so deeply about. So we may have reached our fundraising goal tonight, but there is still, there is always more work to be done and more money to raise. As a proud leader in GBIO, I've seen what it takes to sustain this organization and to count on the donations that can ensure that our terrific organizers can continue the work that's needed to strengthen and deepen the relationships that we need to move forward. And that is why we turn to you again now, our individual supporters, people like us, people who are, are already deep in relationship with one another and with the work of GBIO, people who long for and dream of a future of greater justice for all, 
and people who also benefit from the work that we do together. Our Greater Boston Interfaith Organization will only grow and flourish if we, as individuals, stand up and say that this matters to us and that we're willing to invest in GBIO's future. As individuals who care deeply about GBIO and its mission, we must invest more than our time and our talent. We must also invest our treasure in the profoundly transformative work we do. So now, if you feel it is in your heart and in your means to be exuberantly generous, I offer you two opportunities. First, the bidding is still open for a signed Jacoby Ellsbury jersey. This autographed shirt is now a piece of history and a symbol of how teams are stronger together. Bidding is open in the atrium and in the Levy uh, room through dessert. And after our program, which ends at 9 o'clock, we will close the bidding and announce the winner of this special artifact from the 2013 World Series champion Red Sox. <laughs> Stephen, only one person can take home that jersey tonight. But everybody can have a chance to support GBIO. So inside your program books, there is a card and an envelope. Whether you have personally landed a summer job or learned how to balance your household budget or gained access to health care, if you care passionately that everyone deserves quality education, a gun-free neighborhood, and access to the American dream, please take out that envelope and commitment card now and deepen your investment in GBIO's future. Fill out the information on the card, and as you feel moved, fill that envelope with cash or a check or your credit card information, which I promise to protect. And then there will be an usher out at each door with a basket. You can just drop this envelope in there and know that you are part of a happy, successful evening tonight, no matter what you do. Thank you for your extraordinary generosity in helping us to reach our fundraising goal tonight and for being part of our great future together. We are GBIO, and because of you, we will be and continue to be stronger together. Thank you. Good evening, GBIO. As the choir comes forward to prepare to lead us in our final song, as I prepare for the benediction, I take a moment just to thank all of you. I was sitting here and sort of the thought reverberating through my mind was, I wish my mother was here. Some of you know that uh, my mom lived with us for the last 10 years, and one of the places that she loved to come was GBIO. And I want to say a special word of thanks to uh, Sherry for the way that she welcomed her time after time. She loved coming to the meetings. Sometimes she'd get a little bit disoriented and she would turn to me and say, they're not all Baptists here, are they? <laughs> and I'd say, no, Mom, but they're what a great family. I also want to thank Sherry for uh, many uh, speeches and sermons together that we crafted and ironed out, uh, trying to speak as best we could the counsel of God. And I'm going to ask if you would stand. And as you're able, if you would take your neighbor's hand as we take a moment to speak a word of blessing and benediction. And I need your help. Can everybody here say thank you? Thank you. Okay. As I signal, would you just join with me in giving that word of thanksgiving to God? For the gift of life and health and strength, we say. Thank you. For our gathering in this place of worship and fellowship, we say. O oh God, for your presence in our midst and your power in our work together, we say, Thank you. Lord, we've walked through some difficult days and dark valleys together, moments of pain and loss, grief and sorrow. And in those days and valleys, we have forged relationships that go beyond organization and into the realm of family. So thank you, God 
for 15 years of GBIO's Ministry of Community and Justice, rabble-rousing and reconciliation, confronting power, and building power. And thank you, God, for Sherry, our pearl from the Poconos, our servant leader, sister, daughter, colleague, mother, wife, and friend. May the love she's poured out, the sacrifices she's made, the energy she's invested, the wisdom she's shared return to her a hundredfold in this next season of her life and ministry. And now, God, we ask for your blessing and your guidance as we go forward into the next 15 years and all the years beyond. Fire us up with a passion for righteousness and bind us together with cords of love that cannot be broken. And all this I ask in Jesus' name as together we say, Amen. We have the combined choirs of Fourth Presbyterian Church in South Boston and Roxbury Presbyterian Church here. And they're going to lead us in a song that we all can sing together, This Little Light of Mine. I'm going to let it shine. You all know that. Nod your head, right? Yeah, all right. And you maybe know the second verse. Every, everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Well, let me give you the third verse. The third verse is this. With sherry in our hearts, I'm going to let it shine. And here's the fourth verse. Oh, my gosh. Moving forward, GBIO, I'm going to let it shine. We can handle that, right? So once we get past that one, we're going to bring it home and go back to this little light of mine. Let's start playing.
world. I'm gonna let it shine. This love of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. I'm gonna let it